Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Richard and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is a continuation of my Sumerian September where I am celebrating Robert E. Howard's original Conan stories and um, even though this is labeled September 7th, this is obviously not Saturday, but it is a makeup video because over the weekend I was extremely busy and, uh, you know, it was the last kind of weekend of the summer for us. And so I uh, didn't get a chance to do the 7th or the 8th. And then um, yesterday, uh, obviously, I took a break from the standard, you know, Sumerian September uh, following a Conan story to, of course, honor the passing of uh, James Earl Jones, who, uh, if you are a Robert E. Howard Conan fan, uh, there is no separating uh, James Earl Jones from uh, the, the franchise, in my opinion. Uh, he certainly made the 1982 movie uh, for the classic uh, that it is and um, and so getting back into my normal routine <coughs> I jumped right into the book and in particular the audio uh, driving to work yesterday and I listened to the Scarlet Citadel. Now the Del Rey books uh, The Coming of Conan and others in the, the three book series are um, are narrated by Todd McLaren and so I give him credit there on the uh, on the image and let's talk a little bit about the Scarlet Citadel. So the Scarlet Citadel is, is set in a time uh, where Conan is, is King Conan and he is uh, he had head up a force of 5,000 of his, uh, you know, of some of his best troops, 5,000 of his cavalrymen. And they had gone into the, uh, the country of Ophir, which was a, um, which was an ally of Aquilonia. And he was going there with the intention of helping Ophir fight off the king of uh, Koth and, uh, and his host. Conan, of course, was double-crossed by the king of Ophir, and uh, instead his 5,000 ended up, <coughs> oh, excuse me, his 5,000 ended up fighting off 30,000 combined troops of uh, King Starbonus of Koth and... Uh, you know, and the king of Ophir, which is kind of slipping my mind at the moment. Um, let's see, Am Amalrus, King Amalrus of Ophir. So we start off with the we start off the story with this uh, ballad, an old ballad. The tra they trapped the lion on Shemu's plain. They weighted his limbs with an iron chain. They cried aloud in the trumpet blast. They cried, the lion is caged at last. Woe to the cities of river and plain, if ever the lion stalks again. And that is an old ballad. So they captured Conan. Conan was initially the uh, King Starbonus just wanted to kill him with his archers and, and have him slain, but they were accompanied by a, um, they were accompanied by a wizard. And the wizard wanted to capture Conan alive um, for a purpose that they were not, um, that they weren't, that the kings were not necessarily aware of just yet. And so, the the wizard wanted him captured and um they initially balked at the idea but the wizard exerted his uh uh his intimidation let's say the intimidation factor 
of him was far greater than either of the other two kings um, and, and was only matched by Conan in, uh, you know, in his uh, presence that he emanated uh, just from his, you know, his sheer presence was enough to put everyone around him in check. Uh, and so he, um, he essentially walked up to Conan and everyone was afraid that he would, you know, be slain and, you know, slain instantly by Conan. Conan was still prepared to fight to the death and um, he had a ring. Uh, the wizard had a ring on his hand and he just very quickly struck Conan on his exposed arm where his armor had been torn away and the next thing you know Conan falls to the ground paralyzed um, from uh, purple lotus uh, the juice of a purple lotus so he is now paralyzed and they chain him and they put him into a chariot and they march him off to the capital city of Koth uh, where the other two kings are, are getting prepared to celebrate this huge conquest, you know, having defeated King Conan of Athbalonia and taking him into their capital city where uh, they intend to mock him and, and then do whatever they're uh, being prepared to do with him. They still don't know the plans of the wizard and I'm, I'm scrolling through to get his name. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 I'm our slender taste. Oh, Satha Lanti. Sorry. Satha Lanti is the wizard. Um, if you're familiar at all with Wizards or Sorcerers in Robert E. Howard's uh, Hyborian Age, uh, they tend to be, uh, first of all, very rare, extremely powerful. And, um, and they, they carry much, much influence, uh, uh, particularly like political influence around them too. So they tend to be the behind the scenes, behind the throne of, uh, you know, very large kingdoms. And uh, they are the real power behind those thrones in many cases, uh, doing their machinations, you know, and, and, and bending others to their will. Uh, so Conan is now um, in shackles in the capital city of Koth and the two kings, Starbonus and uh, Amalrus, are uh, mocking him. And one of the, one of the uh, passages that was read during this is from the Road of Kings. And I think it really, it stood out to me because I think it's the real underlying theme of the entire story. All right, so from the Road of Kings. Gleaming shell of an outworn lie, fabled of right divine. You gained your crowns by heritage, but blood was the price of mine. The throne that I won by blood and sweat, by Krom, I will not sell. For promise of valleys filled with gold, or threat of the halls of hell. And that is from the Road of Kings. These two kings were mocking, or at least attempting to mock Conan, uh, King Conan. And Conan wasn't having any of it. And he says to them, you know, you gained your thrones through hereditary. Uh, I fought for mine. You know, I bled for mine. I slew for mine. And when they were attempting to bribe him to betray Aquilonia um, and, and just ride off uh, never to, you know, return there again, um, Conan basically, you know, told him to, you know, kick sand. I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, he's not going to be remembered as a, as a traitor 
or as a coward or a sellout or anything like that. Um, if anything, he was perfectly happy with dying on the battlefield and being remembered um, as as a, an outlander king, loved or hated, didn't matter to him, but an outlander king that, um, you know, that basically died with his boots on to steal from an Iron Maiden song. Um, it really does show that comparison <clears throat> that Robert E. Howard makes throughout the Conan the Barbarian stories between civilization and the barbarous savagery that Conan uh, embodied and how any time that there is a any time that there's the potential or, or the belief of the civilized man, even a king, that um, that they are equal to Conan uh, in any way is immediately dispelled by just Conan's own presence. Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't see even as a captured you know uh, individual by these kings, he still doesn't elevate them to being his equal and certainly not his better. Um, Conan actually has more, um, is, is, is more impressed, let's say, by the sorcerer than he is by either of these two kings. Uh, he knows that the sorcerer is his true threat. And uh, these two kings are buffoons. Uh, you know, to him. Um, not that they can't kill him, but they can't break him. All right, and that's the key to it. And they really don't quite understand. Uh, and, and even the wizard would end up making this mistake as well. They don't understand the, um, the brutish savagery that Conan is capable of. And when he is thrown into the dungeons of the Scarlet Citadel, um, the, the sorcerer believes that, well, that's the end of Conan. He is now going to be killed by the denizens within, the, um, within this uh, place, which is primarily the major creature that, um, that most would believe is... Um, you know, the most dangerous creature in that place was this humongous, like 100 foot long snake. And, um, and of course, you know, Conan uh, avoids being initially killed by the snake. And then later on, uh, he is going to, uh, he's going to end up fighting it and defeating it, um, along with some other creatures that were also in this dungeon and he makes his way and he escapes. So again, it's another story from uh, Robert E. Howard of Conan's uh, perseverance, his uh, brutal savagery, and his, uh, and just the very difference between, um, between Conan and other more um, other more barbarous uh, people of, of those civilizations compared to uh, that of, uh, I should say societies, not civilizations, uh, compared to men of civilization. And, and so it's a, you know, it's a great way, I think, that Robert E. Howard carries this this underlying theme throughout every one of his Conan the Barbarian stories, <coughs> they were also tied to some of his other characters, which are also within the same um, setting as the Hyborian Age. So Cull had this feature as well. And um, Brule the Spear, the Spear Slayer 
uh, was also a Pictish warrior. Uh, Bran McMorn had this also a, a very savage, barbarous uh, background to him. And they were always, um, they were always better than the civilized man. Uh, in every aspect of their being, they were better. And um, it's just a great story. Um, runs a little bit, very close to an hour or so, uh, you know, hour, hour and ten minutes or so to listen to. Um, it is five chapters in the book. You can find, um, there's the Gutenberg.net, uh, .au, which is like a, um, which is like a library where you can get uh, Robert E. Howard's stories of Conan and others um, because all of those stories are uh, in public domain. And so there are plenty of sources where you can find, um, find these original stories and, uh, and read them for free. Uh, although I do recommend getting the Del Rey series of books because they are just phenomenal and they're going to add additional insight in there that you're not going to get just from reading uh, Robert E. Howard's stories as well. And the audiobooks are, are phenomenal. The, the narration by Todd McLaren is certainly well worth getting both the soft cover book, you know, and then getting the audio book as well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I will come back uh, tomorrow with uh, September 8th. And now I'm already behind with 10. Uh, eventually, I'm going to do two of these in one day to try to get all caught up. Uh, that will probably be by Friday. I should be back up to speed and, uh, and back on track again. So, um, as always, thanks for joining. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and to comment in the comment section and to share these videos out there. Um, this will be linked to the... Uh, Sumerian September playlist that's on my channel. Uh, so probably around like eight or nine uh, videos now. So definitely check those out. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. You'll have a great rest of your day.